I am pessimistic about jobs, but on the other hand, that doesn't mean that this is a bad thing for humanity or society. Um, the, the challenge for us is going to be to adapt to this, to make it into a good thing and not a bad thing. And you can imagine a very optimistic future. You can imagine maybe someday people don't have to do jobs they don't like. People don't have to do dangerous or dirty jobs, that all of that is done by machines. Um, but the, the issue we face, obviously, is that right now, a job comes with an income, and if you don't have a job, then you don't have an income, and that's a real issue for us to figure out. So I think we need to find a solution to that problem so that we can make sure all this progress we're going to see in the next couple of decades benefits everyone and yeah. uh, makes us all better off. This is a general purpose technology. It's going to be everywhere. So the, the real answer is almost every industry. You know, some may be hit first before others, and, and it may be quite unpredictable, but you know, as you look at industries across the board, think of fast food, people flipping hamburgers, uh, people driving cars, Uber drivers, taxi drivers, uh, people working in warehouses and factories and, and, and offices everywhere. It's really just everywhere. So I think it's going to be a very systemic impact. Right now, the things that humans do better are, are things like being creative, right? generating new ideas. This is something that so far machines aren't really very good at, although there are, there are limited examples you can give of, of machines that have been creative. Um, so that's probably the role for human beings in the future, but there probably aren't enough of those opportunities for everyone because most people do routine average things and, and machines are going to be better at doing those, those typical average things. Now, um, and, and technology will do many things that people can't do. It's not just about speed and efficiency, it's about in, you know, creating entirely new possibilities. And I think that we're very much at the beginning of this in terms of the impact. I mean, we are seeing some dramatic advances in technologies like artificial intelligence that hasn't yet had a dramatic impact on employment or on the workforce. I mean, in, in the United States, the unemployment rate is still low. So this is something that still lies in the future, but it may be on top of us before we're ready. I mean, we, there's no telling really how fast this is coming. I tend to think in terms of 10 years from now, 15 years from now, that, that we're really going to see a significant impact. But that's really just a guess. Yeah. Um, there's really no way to say with any certainty how soon this is going to arrive. And certainly many people think that it might be more like five years before we really start seeing a dramatic impact. It's overall definitely a global thing. It may manifest in certain countries first if they're on the sort of leading edge of the technology. Um, but it has implications for rich countries and poor countries. I, I, I did a, a tour in China where I talk about this and there's tremendous interest in there. All the factories are automating in China. They're bringing in robots and that's going to impact jobs in factories for millions and millions of people. So um, every country in the world will be impacted by this for sure. The way this ties in to my mind is that, you know, the issue that I've talked about a lot is that if technology creates lots of inequality, if it eliminates lots of jobs, uh, then that can undermine growth. I mean, you know, in order to have a successful market economy, in order for capitalism to work, you've got to have consumers. You've got to have people that can buy the products and services being produced. So if we get into a situation where technology eliminates the jobs that gets money into the hands of the people to buy things, then how, how are we going to have a thriving economy? How are we going to have economic growth? So the idea is you have a guaranteed income floor, and that does two things. It allows people to survive economically so that they're not living on the street, and it also gets money into their hands so that they can help drive the economy. So it is one viable solution to this problem. If you had a guaranteed income, it would quite possibly drive a more entrepreneurial, dynamic economy. Because, you know, imagine you've, you've got a job now that's very boring, you're not growing, you're not learning anything, but you keep your job because you need the income, right? Yeah. Now in the future, if you had a guaranteed income floor, you might be more willing to leave that job and try to start a business or take a job at a smaller company or, or you know, take more economic risks because you would have a safety net. There are many, many ethical issues, in ter you know, with, with these technologies. I mean, in the military arena, they're having a big impact. Uh, there's a huge debate over autonomous, fully autonomous robots, you know, a robot that could decide by itself to shoot someone. Uh, many people think that technology should be banned um, in the way that chemical weapons have been banned, you know. And, and, but then again, chemical weapons were used in Syria, so that ban isn't totally effective. And I think the same would be true for these robotics. So there are many implications of that. It's obviously a great thing if you can... Um, 
save soldiers' lives, that they don't have to be put in harm's way. On the other hand, the other side of that is, you know, many people would argue about the United States that we're much too fast to go to war, right? Now, if in the future we can go to war without risking soldiers' lives, maybe it becomes more likely that, that we go to war, right? Which might not be a good thing. So there, this is a very, very complex issue with lots of things that need to be thought through and debated. My um, assumption is that it, it would be very, very difficult to prevent these technologies from developing. And, and the reason is that there's a tremendous competitive dynamic. I mean, you've got companies competing, you've got countries competing, right? China's working on this, the US is working, Russia is working on this, they're all competing. Um, so how do you get that to stop? Um, it's, it's not easy. One of the problems with that is that because it's been in so many science fiction movies, people tend not to take it seriously and, and want to really seriously discuss these issues because they, it opens them up to ridicule, you know, that, that you'll be, you, you know, you're talking science fiction. But in fact, these things are becoming real and they're important issues that we need to think about. At least what I'm trying to do is build awareness of this by, by giving interviews like this, by, by talking to people. And the hope is that, you know, this sort of bubbles to the surface, right? More public discussion, more public debate. And then as it becomes more of a public issue that more people are interested in and concerned about, it eventually evades the, or invades the, the political arena, right? And, and policymakers begin to really pay more attention to this. I think that it's a critical issue, both in terms of things like military applications and, and even more importantly, in terms of the impact on employment and on society.